So this lesson is on equivalent trig expressions, and we're going to help uh, look at these trigonometric relationships by using the unit circle. So the first unit circle shows two angles in the first quadrant. Now there's a really nice relationship between these two angles. This first angle here, let's say it's theta. Now the second angle here is called pi over 2 minus theta. So this angle is pi over 2 minus theta and this angle here is theta. So what's the relationship between pi over 2 minus theta and theta? They are complementary angles. So we, we kind of hinted at it, um, hinted at the relationship using um, the two congruent triangles we talked about earlier. So sine of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to something theta. Well, because the angles are complementary, I'm allowed to use the complementary trig function, which is cos theta. That's a relationship. If I work with a complementary angle, I can switch it to the complementary trig function. So. I'm going to use the complementary trig function, so I'll go from cosine to sine. What about tan? What's the complementary trig function? I'm going to go with, oops, cotan theta. Cosecant, if I work with the complementary angle, I'm allowed to change it to secant theta. Secant of pi over 2 minus theta, complementary angle, I'm going to change it to cosecant theta. Cotan of pi over 2 minus theta, I'm going to change it to the complementary trig function of tan, and of course use a complementary angle, theta. So I want to go back, make sure you understand that these two triangles, they are congruent triangles. If they were not congruent, then these two lengths would not be the same, and these two will not be the same, and then the whole relationship falls apart. But because they are congruent, then you have these relationships. So by the way, these six are called the co-function identities because they allow us, these identities allow us to switch from one function to its complementary trig function. Now what if the angles are not in the first quadrant? because in the first diagram, the angles were both in the first quadrant. But if they're not in the first quadrant, so let's say this angle here is theta, and this angle here is pi over two plus theta. What we have to do is ask ourselves, what is the reference angle of pi over two plus theta? Okay, this is pi over two plus theta, but what is the reference angle here? What is the reference angle here? I'll give you a hint. The angle from the y-axis to the terminal arm, the, y, the, the angle between the y-axis and the and I know we usually don't look at the angle between the y-axis and the terminal arm because a lot of students confuse this is the reference angle. This is not the reference angle, but it's going to help us find the reference angle. So if this angle here is pi over 2 plus theta, then this angle here must be theta. And if the angle between the y-axis and the terminal arm is theta, then the angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis here is pi over 2 minus theta. So with all that said, all we really wanted to know was what the, what, what the reference angle was. So if the reference angle of pi over 2 plus theta is pi over 2 minus theta, that means that sine of pi over 2 plus theta, I can switch it. I can switch it to the complementary trig function because the reference angle is pi over 2 minus theta. It's complementary to theta. So I can switch it to cos theta. Same over here. I'm going to switch it to sine theta. For all of them, I'm going to switch it to the complementary trig function. Now be careful here. I switch it to the complementary trig function, but unlike the first diagram, unlike the first diagram right here, 
both the angles I've shown you are in the first quadrant. But in this unit circle, one of my angles is in the second quadrant. Pi over 2 plus theta is in the second quadrant. Now if pi over 2 plus theta is in the second quadrant, only sine is positive. So that means this is negative. Because cosine of pi over 2 plus theta was negative. So I can, I can change it to a first quadrant angle, but you have to add that negative. Add that negative. Because only sine is positive in the second quadrant. Okay, so the key idea is if it's not in the first quadrant, no problem. You just have to find the reference angle and then you have two choices. The reference angle is either going to be pi over 2 minus theta, which means you have to switch it to the complementary trig function, or it's going to be theta, which means you keep the same trig function, which is what we're going to see in a second. Perfect. So this time I'm working with the two angles. Here is theta. Okay, and this angle in the second quadrant is pi minus theta. So what is the reference angle of pi minus theta? Well, that's not that bad. Pi minus theta. So this reference angle must be theta. Interesting. So what's the reference angle of pi minus theta again? Theta, not pi over 2 minus theta. So guess what, for all of these, Am I going to switch it to the complementary trig function? No, because the reference angle is theta. So it's going to be sine theta, cosecant theta, cos theta, secant theta, tan theta, cotan theta. Be careful, pi minus theta is in the second quadrant, and only sine is positive. So negative, 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 negative. When I see these six relationships, I think of what I did in grade 11. So I'm going to go back to degrees to help you for a second. So I think of this. Sine 150 degrees is exactly the same as sine 30 degrees. All right? So this, these six identities is basically saying, take a second quadrant angle, push it to the first quadrant, and make it equal to the reference angle. Okay, how about this one? We're working with theta, of course, and then this angle here is pi plus theta. So what's the reference angle of pi plus theta? Theta. If the reference angle of pi plus theta is theta, should we switch it to the complementary trig function? Of course not. So here would be sine theta, cosecant theta, cos theta, secant theta, tan theta, cotan theta. Now be careful, pi plus theta is in the third quadrant where only tan is positive. Here we go. All right, let's do two more. So we have theta, and this time the angle here is 3 pi over 2 minus theta. So we have to ask ourselves, what's the reference angle of 3 pi over 2 minus theta? How do you find the reference angle of 3 pi over 2 minus theta? You subtract by pi. If you take 3 pi over 2 minus theta and you subtract by pi, you will get pi over 2 minus theta. So the reference angle here is pi over 2 minus theta. Hmm, so the reference angle of 3 pi over 2 minus theta is not theta, it's complementary to theta. So if it's complementary to theta, guess what? For all six of these, I'm going to switch it to the complementary trig function. So I know it's going to be cos theta, secant theta, cosine becomes sine theta, secant becomes cosecant theta, tan becomes cotan theta, and cotan becomes tan theta. It really helps when you visualize the six trig functions as three pairs of trig functions, the original function and its complementary trig function. 
sine and cosine, secant and cosecant, tangent and cotangent. So that, that visualization really helps with this lesson. Okay, anyways, uh, I forgot the signs. 3 pi over 2 minus theta is in the third quadrant, which means negative for sine and cos. One more to go. So we have 2 pi minus theta and theta. So this is theta, and then this is 2 pi minus theta. So what's the reference angle? Well, this is 2 pi minus theta. So the reference angle of 2 pi minus theta is theta. What does that mean? You have two choices. Should I switch it to the complementary trig function or keep it the same? And the answer is keep it the same because the reference angle of 2 pi minus theta is theta, not, not pi over 2 minus theta. So sine theta, cosecant theta, cos theta, secant theta, cotan theta, tan theta. Uh, cosine is the only one positive in the fourth quadrant. Okay. And if you really want, you can uh, think of this as once again something you saw in grade eleven. So if I saw, uh, let's do let's do tan. Tan of forty-five degrees is equal to negative tan of three hundred fifteen degrees. Actually, let's write it the other way around. Because you're usually given tan 315. You push it to the fourth, you push it from fourth to the first quadrant, but add the negative because tan is negative in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so these uh, relationships can keep going on and on forever. Unfortunately, they end up repeating themselves. Why? Because we are working with a circle, the unit circle specifically. But let's just write circle. I do want to add that uh, in this lesson, I've assumed in all these relationships, I've assumed that theta is an acute angle, but it doesn't have to be an acute angle. Uh, you can investigate that, but you'll notice that the relationships that we've developed here still hold true. Okay, so you can spend some time doing that. And I also want to mention is that we didn't do 3 pi over 2 plus theta. Okay. So if you want, you can draw another diagram for 3 pi over 2 plus theta and see what their relationships will be. We have some questions, but I'll split the video uh, or the lesson into two parts.